Welcome to Second Take, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. Transnet has reported a major loss amid a collapse in the performance of its rail business in particular. Terence Creamer joins me to discuss the outlook. Hi Terence. Hi oh, Snow. Was the 5.7 billion rand loss a surprise? No, I don't think it was a surprise because I think everyone knows that the Transnet business has been in a sort of free fall now for a number of years. We see it particularly on the rail business as you mentioned. The volumes back five years ago, they were doing volumes of about 220 million tons a year. Last year, they didn't even reach 150 million tons. So when, you, when you've got that sort of volume collapse, you must expect that the, the business financially is going to be affected. And it wasn't just the rail business. There were other parts of the business that weren't performing up to standard. And I think that is quite well known. It's in the public domain. We know about a lot about the cable theft that's affected the business, but massively, the massive impact of not having locomotives available. And that is a sort of a transition from the state capture era. We know that at the State Capture Commission, we heard that really there was extreme uh, corruption in state capture of Transnet, particularly around the supply of locomotives. And uh, it came to a head as, as they tried to get settlements with these different locomotive suppliers and they've mostly reached settlements, but not having particularly the Chinese locomotives and not having spares for those, and having that still not being resolved means that uh, certain corridors cannot perform, and uh, particularly the coal corridor. And we know that it was a big year for coal last year after the Russia uh, invaded Ukraine, and there was a lot of demand for coal, and that's why we've just seen this proliferation of trucks on the road taking coal to different ports into Mozambique, down to Richards Bay. It's a death trap on certain roads. So really, the, the, I don't think it is a surprise that the financial performance is now ref reflecting that. Last year, you know, there was this 5 billion rand profit, but that was very much distorted by a fair value adjustment to their property portfolio, which made it, you know, prettied up the results. So really, they've been in this loss-making position in reality now for a couple of years. but. If you just look back, and they weren't anywhere great shakes back five years ago, but, but five years ago they were performing at a much different level in terms of just the tempo, the volumes that were going through the business. I think obviously COVID's had a massive impact on the business, but they haven't managed them like their way out of COVID at all. There was also an increase in the group's debt and debt repayments. Yes, yeah, so the debt's really ballooned. Uh, it's at 130 billion rand. It's not massively up year on year, but because of the financial constraints and the asset deterioration in the business and the um, revenue decline on this, this poor, poor volume performance, they really are in a, a bad debt position now. And we've heard the story before with Eskom. We're now seeing it very much, and we've seen it with so many other state-owned companies where the debt has become unsustainable. It's got to a point where they, their pay repayments or a billion rand a month, so 12 billion rand a year. And that's fine if you've got the assets, you've got the balance sheet, and you've got the revenue, but they don't. So we've now hit, it transnets, hit a debt crisis, and it's, it's, uh, it's real, it's, it's in front of them, and it's going to constrain any turnaround. What was the tone of the shareholder and the new chair at the presentation? I think it was refreshingly frank, in the sense that basically, you know, I think uh, the business is in bad shape. We know that a National Logistics Crisis Committee has been set up by the presidency, uh, but much like the, what's happened in the electricity space to try and deal with this. The shell, the minister, Pravin Gordon, was particularly assertive, put out a, a, a page of what he wants the board to do immediately, and I think uh, the one that caught everyone's attention is he wants a review of the executive management team basically saying, is this team up to the job? And obviously, it's a new board, two months, I think, next week. <laughs> so they have their work cut out for them, and they have to do this review. They have to prepare an operational turnaround plan that's credible. And then I've told you about the debt thing, so that makes it very difficult, because to have an operational turnaround without a financial turnaround. Uh, and I think the, the new chair, and Sankou, actually put that onto the table and said, look, it's, yes, operationally within our control, we have to do 
but we can get the assets sweated, get those Chinese locomotives back onto the rail as fast as possible. It's, uh, it's really outrageous, actually, as South Africans that we're sitting here, that they haven't sorted this out. And it is, there are moving parts here, and it is uh, complicated because it involves the Reserve Bank and the revenue services, but really, uh, this is a national crisis, and it ne needs to have a result. Either you resolve it, or you buy other locomotives, or you move uh, to a different solution. But you can't have this hanging over the group for so many years without resolution. So it's it's a real problem. But he put it, I think, very clearly that we, yes, there's stuff in our control, and we're going to focus on that stuff in our control. But there's stuff that's outside of our control, and really, that's the financial stuff now, because it's. It's good. He's looking at the shareholder and saying, you know, okay, and the security, you know, they need the police, they need all that sort of help as well. But the the financial thing's going to be outside of this board's control to a certain point. Obviously, if you sweat your assets to get the, the trains running a bit better, uh, get those locomotives back onto the rail that have been sitting idle, hundreds of them, in warehouses without spares, that will obviously improve the financial position. But it's become unsustainable. It's, it's clear it's become unsustainable. So he was quite frank, and it seems that uh, when they sit with the turnaround plan, they're going to, they will say to the shareholder, we are undercapitalized, we need a recapitalization. The shareholder is going to say, not a chance. <laughs> There's no money in the kitty, as we know. Uh, taxpayers are highly stressed, uh, de stressed, and stressed, stretched. So there's no money from the taxpayer. So what are we going to do? So really, uh, I think that we need to wait to see what the board puts out in terms of the turnaround strategy. But the financial element's going to be very interesting to watch. And will it involve asset disposals, for instance? Because that's if you can't raise the money from the shareholder, um, you have to sell something or you have to close certain things down or downsize and let others take it on. And the other big thing would be the public, the private partnerships. So I think the, that's where we're at with Transnet. And we have to wait for this new board, which took, it took very long to reconstitute this new board. So that again goes back to the shareholder and government. Why does it take so long when it was clear a new board was needed? But anyway, they've been there for two months. They need to come with their plan. And I think uh, we have to wait. That's the next big step. What development should we be looking out for in the coming period? Uh, we need to see what the board realistically, credibly puts on the table. I think there are credible people in this new board, um, and we want to see that that um, that, that plan is, is the next big milestone. But at the same time, we have to see what's happening at the National Logistics Crisis Committee, which has been set up with a number of work streams. They're also looking very much at the turnaround planned issues. So they, and two of the board members are sitting uh, in and have been seconded to the National Crisis Committee. And then we have to look at what this review says about the, the management and whether they fit for purpose and the executive team. Th that's that's going to be also, I think, a big, a big focus for a lot of people to see whether, because we know that there's been ha unhappiness from the major clients. The major clients are really the mining companies for a number of years now. And they're basically saying this is not working and we're not getting the response from the executive leadership that we expect in this crisis. So, and we saw some statements from uh, Patrice Motsepe, who doesn't really comment on these issues. And he was fairly forthright that they need to see serious action out of Transnet and really soon. So I think it's coming to a tipping point. So there's a number of things that we can look out for. But I think the board's plan, uh, the National Crisis Committee's alignment to that plan and what the different work streams are going to work on in terms of helping the turnaround. And then within that plan, this financial restructuring, what that's going to mean for us as taxpayers. Thank you. That's the second tax show for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis. Also, don't forget to listen to the audio version of our Engineering News daily email newsletter.